Inside joke, inside joke, inside joke. I've been waiting to tackle you one day. God damn, oh my god. I've been waiting. Oh my god, you don't know how long I have been waiting to go over this show. Inside joke. I, I, I swear to god, this has been like one of the most anticipated shows on my channel. Like every every video I see. Oh, do an inside joke video. Do an inside joke video. Like I get it. I get it, and I did it! I finally did it! I've made my thoughts on Inside Joke. God damn, where do I begin? Warning, this video has spoilers for both Inside Joke and Knees Bees. Do not watch this video until you have seen the entirety of both shows. For those who don't know, Inside Joke is the wildly successful television show premiering on YouTube on September 2nd, 2017. It currently has 25 episodes premiered with a few still underway and is still on its second season. The show is about a group of friends and their adventures to conquer early teenhood. It consists of five primary characters, Noah Lopez, Lily Rice, Alyssa West, Carson O'Connell, and Fusi Fizzletoon, each with their own attributes and traits. It's a continuity-based show, meaning there's an underlying story and theme about growing up and tackling the real world. It's a simple premise that resonated with viewers and made the show something genuinely special. Until it all fucking changed! Now, I don't really need to explain Inside Joke more. All of you know what it is. Everyone in the world knows what it is. It's like one of the most popular TV shows on the air right now. Like, if you haven't heard of it, you're actually fucking retarded. Like, everyone has heard of this show. Everyone knows the premise, you know, Carson going, oh, we're, we're Fousey, let's stop racism, and Fousey's like, ah, woo, 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 woo. we ain't stopping racism today. It's, it, it, it's to be expected that everyone knows this show. It, like, revolutionized TV as we know it, and, like, showed how serialized cartoons can be actually good. And, I mean, I guess it worked for a while, but... There's like, a BIG PROBLEM with the show! HUGE PROBLEM! You see, Inside Joke is a show devoid of any professionalism and effort, and only exists now as a quick buck. What started as a novel idea slowly became devoid of hope. How did this all start? Well, I think it was midway onto Season 1. The Whole World's Unfair, Season 1, Episode 7, marked a big turning point in the series. Up to this point, the characters were basically fully established, except for Lily we'll touch on later. Fusi was the large ego-induced lovable asshole who always wanted his way and was shown to have ASMR tendencies with the character Alyssa, while Carson was shown to be the straight man and reasonable one of the show. Noah was shown to be an incompetent person without enough self-awareness to see what was going on, constantly fucking around with the others for his own enjoyment and the audiences too. All these characters bounced off each other well, but this episode marked the end of all of that. The Whole World's Unfair takes place after the cliffhanger of the episode It Gives Me Pure Joy, where Fusi and Alyssa become disdained with one another, and cuts back to Fusi being with Carson explaining the ordeal. The both agree that the world is completely void of importance and drink their sorrows away. This would have been a good way to end this subplot, but instead, they drag this subplot for the next five fucking episodes trying to show Fousey disturbing himself and moving on as well as Alyssa too. My fucking god. God fucking... I feel like Noah is behind like every problem of the show. Now, I'm talking about the creator! I'm talking about like the actual character of the show. Like you see him do all this shit like, you know, make Alyssa and Fousey hate each other or like pretend to hang Lily like... I don't even fucking know his motives! This is not like, you know, foreshadowing of any kind. It's just bad writing! Like, does no one else point this out? I mean, I know everyone has problems with the show, but no one really, like, points this out. This is, like, a pretty obvious problem people have. Like, is no one really gonna point this out? Okay, well, I just did. I hate Noah. Alright? Okay. I As most hardcore fans of the show know, these episodes are so shallow and bland and add barely any depth on the sole story of the show, which in case you forgot, is trying to keep their dimensional rift, quote unquote, discord alive. And all of that, all of that built up, it takes a backseat. And what does it take a backseat to? Well, let's see the episodes that came after. Hmm, Alyssa in the shower texting Fusi, or Fusi using a not so bot dog? It's pathetically lazy on the writer's side, and I believe this is when the golden writing of the show was shown to be short-lived. The show tries to prove itself to be good once more, however, 
as Lily gets some much needed screen time in the episodes Monkey in the Middle and Not Fair. These episodes make it seem like Lily, a once dormant background character, is not actually what she seems and may in fact be the main antagonist of the show. But what does the show do? It dismisses all of this in the episode right before the season finale, Splatwoke, where Noah becomes self-conscious he's in a TV show and calls out all the fans who actually thought there would be some substance to the show, and this episode came right after the Soundtrack Volume 1 episode, showing how all the characters try to start a band that utterly teared them apart, all being manipulated by Lily the whole time. I'm not telling you that Lily and I fucked. Wait, you thought I was talking about the album? Oh, you guys are retarded. That was a joke. Instead of developing on her character arc, it just ends right there. The season is over, right? Well, not quite. See, I think these choices were actually done on purpose to drive a bigger message to the show. Satire and nihilism. Nihilism being the belief that one's actions do not matter in the grand scheme of things, and satire being a much more comedic play on that it's not meant to be taken too seriously, but it's not entirely devoid of any meaning or heart. This is evident in the season finale, Army Man Gets Lost During Field Day, in which Carson goes through and sees secrets from all the characters. This is a HUGE bombshell to the series! Noah's revealed to be with Lily on fucking up these characters' lives. Can we just also say that Lily is my fucking... Oh my god, she's so hot. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm not like attracted to cartoon characters or anything, but like... If I had to be attracted to one, it'd be Lily Rice, like... Jesus Christ, like, I don't want to sound creepy or anything, but like, mm, like, that, that's, she's pretty hot. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyways, back to my fucking ramble that I'm going on for like, I don't fucking know, 15 minutes now? I don't know how long this video is gonna be, it's gonna be 5 minutes. Anyways, back to the actual video. While Lissa and Fusi are shown to be completely unaware of the situation, resorting to ASMR as the answer, and Carson. Finally, after 20 episodes, his arc seems to be complete. He discovers the lost city of Albany. Albany. And, uh, can we just say, like, Carson is a fucking pussy? Hiding, like, in the fucking vents of the house? Like, come on, dude. Don't you have a dick? Don't you want to fuck Alyssa? God damn. Anyways, that's not the point I'm trying to make. Back to the rambling. This opens up a ton of future stories for the show to tell. But what do they do? What is the problem I'm trying to get here? Why do I now hate this show so much, you ask? Why do I think the season's not really over in my eyes? Padding. It's all padding. See, I can basically explain the show much better in this simple video. Hold up, I'll play it right here. Oh god, my leg is just cheap! Hold up, hold up. Pause the video. God damn. Okay, okay. That this isn't horsing around. What if in the very first scene we show my character literally taking a massive dump on a VHS copy of the horsing good around? Child. What? That's insane. Well, let's just put it in. We can always take it out later. I want this character to be really edgy. We're on episode 7 of season 2 now, and Albany, which was shown to be in season 1, hasn't been brought up since. Instead, the writers are trying to flesh out these characters even more, hoping the audience will be invested in them. But it's too late for that! Instead of making us care about the characters by placing them in this new, special, exciting location, they focus on padding out the series, knowing they aren't creatively driven enough to do anything with this premise. It reminds me of other shows such as Adventure Time that started giving a shit about continuity halfway through their run, yet still tried making single story episodic shows. And episodes! You can't make a show like that! Imagine it like this, Spongebob and the gang finally discover something that would surely change the course of the show's history. And the next episode focuses on each character alone, instead of building on previously established things, doing stupid, retarded, mundane bullshit. Wouldn't that fucking suck? Wouldn't that be so disappointing? Wouldn't that be fucking stupid? <sighs> you wanna be like Butch Hartman? Go with that! I don't know! I wanted to write this show run for over 10 years! You wanted to be like that? Be like that! I don't care! Have the
the show burn in the ground. Go be like, make your own YouTube channel, draw some stupid art with your left arm. I don't care. That's how you want to be like, I don't care. You go be like that. I Also, this isn't really related to anything I've been talking about for like the past like 10, however fucking long this video will be, but like, doesn't anyone realize like the audio and like the voice like mixing is like kind of bad sometimes? Like, it sounds like this sometimes, like Jesus fucking Christ. Yes. Oh, okay, no, no, okay, not like that. More like, wait, wait, I got it, I got it. Hey guys, I'm really sorry about what I did recently. Was if I had to think of the writer's logic in like one straightforward black and white way, I think of it like this. And that brings me to another point, and that is the similarities the show has to another short-lived and unconcluded TV show you may not be aware of. Knees Bees. Now everyone knows what Knees Bees, it's been all over the news. Best TV show since fucking Rick and Morty. But see, what I think the writers are taking the most inspiration from is this show, Knees Bees. And in case you don't know what Knees Bees is, which you should, it's a show about a character named Knees Bees and his gang trying to stop Gino from taking a magical artifact that could destroy the world. The show worked because it relied on absurdism and not making much sense, but also building a rich story with a large cast of characters. Seriously, if you haven't watched this show, fucking watch it now. It's an amazing piece of filming history, and only one season in air. Only one season! It's still not finished with its first season. Go and watch the season right now. J just watch up to the newest episode. I'll be waiting. Okay, I'm gonna go take a shit. Jesus Christ, I'm really on speed. Go watch these bees. Oh god! Are you done? Good. See what I mean? You see how the entire structure of the show is basically mirrored by inside joke? Don't believe me? Let me show you. The first three episodes establish the characters and their settings. The next four try to develop the continuity of the show. The next five to six episodes focus on developing and padding out characters when the main story is ignored. Okay. There you go. So it's obvious the creator of Inside Joke, Noah Levine, is taking a shit ton of inspiration from Neesbees. But why does it work in Neesbees much more than it does in Inside Joke? It's very simple. These bees doesn't make you care. In the universe of Knees Bees, it's established that the universe these characters live in are devoid of reason and hope. Their sole purpose is to survive and stop the evil. It's black and white. But it works so well because of the fact from episode 1, showing Joey Drew, a character the writers make you feel so emotionally invested in within the span of 22 minutes, was shown killing himself in the last 4 seconds. So, everybody's got skeletons in the closet. Let's see what I have to say about our old buddy Joey Drew. What the fuck? <laughs> this is amazing. It pulls at the viewer's expectations in a way that makes you realize you just stop being a pussy and expect anything. What about the episode where Gus is killed off by Gino? But the show doesn't touch upon that more. It's simple. These characters are expendable, and Gino, being a large work of evil, means that sacrifices are be too expected. But this doesn't correlate with Inside Joke, however, which makes you purposely be invested in these characters, the underlying story, and more, to the point where he becomes annoying and you long for something more exciting and not as mundane. Nobody is shown unimportance in Inside Joke, and everyone is treated equally and usually gets equal screen time. This is good for a serialized show, but I think the, tri the writers here tried going the Knees Bees route, which worked a bit 
until they started putting repercussions for these characters' actions, such as Fusi's racism, Carson's underdog behavior, and Alyssa's whole fucking stupid subplot. It's sad too, because this could have been a masterpiece of a show in every episode, but every episode was rushed to production in the span of a few weeks. Unlike Neesby's, shown to take its time more. With its first episode being released on April 23rd, 2016, and still being on its first season, it's almost been out for like, two years now, and it's still doing great. So I don't fucking know. I really don't fucking know. You can't just make a TV show that doesn't care about criticism. You need to take criticism from your fans and put that in the show. Like, when I first watched the show, I was like, holy crap, this is going to be the best TV show I have ever seen. Like, I felt so invested. It was like one of those feel-good shows that you could also really easily get into, you know? But it just, like, it fell apart so, so quickly. And this is a problem, especially for a show that I once loved so much. Like, it feels like they, they've given up. They've, like, wasted all their potential in, like, the first half of the season. It's really sad. Like, these characters are so developed. They have such rich history. I just don't want to see that all go away because they're trying to copy fucking these bees. An entirely different style of show. Hey, friends, I take you out to this beautiful restaurant on this nice night. And you're sitting here not saying anything. Ignore me. What are you doing? I'm sorry for ignoring you. Thank you for taking me out to this beautiful restaurant. What the fuck, bitch? Why can you speak? Like, these bees is different. It focuses on absurdism. Like, that's what it's meant to be. Like, let's look at shit that did absurdism correctly. Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Fucking Water. Sponge Out of Water, it's retarded. It's so retarded. The writers know it's retarded. They obviously know it's stupid. There's a fucking dolphin in space. They go fucking time traveling. It turns into a live action movie at one point. They obviously know it's stupid and they just go along with it. The secret Krabby Patty formula disappears and it turns into Mad Max all of a sudden. Like, they're completely aware of how retarded it is. That's absurdism done right. When you know how stupid a plot is, but you just go along with it for the ride. But Inside Joke, like, it had a premise, it had a story, it had things building up to every next episode. You can't just, like, change all that and, you know, just make fun of the people who actually care and want to see the show succeed. You, you can't do that. That's not right. Daisy? Whoopsie Daisy. Now I know I'm rambling on, but like, I just want to close off the video like this. If anyone from the writing team is watching this show, I just want you to know, you have a lot of potential. You people are obviously talented people. I don't want this show to end! That would mean people like losing their jobs, losing their hobbies, what they love to do, but you have the time and money to put in so much more effort in this show and make this something big, something that will be remembered for my grandchildren. And you're not doing it right now. So that's what you gotta do. Try. Noah Levine, Yusuf Hassan, everyone else on the writing team, just try. Please, try harder. Because if you don't try harder, your show's fucking dead. Your show, you wanted it to be like Fairly Odd Parents? Make it be like Fairly Odd Parents. I am not for Fairly Odd Parents.